session of February organization meeting. Um, we have various items on our core organization, the organization matters. We have resolutions 011501, we adopt 2015 meeting schedule. Resolution 502, designation of official newspapers for 2015. Resolution 503, council designation of liaison to various authority boards and commission for 2015. Resolution 504, designation of council member to planning board 2015, which is council member Elizabeth Galari. Resolution 505, designation of council member to board of directors of city market for 2015, um, council member John Anderson. Resolution 506, approved 2015 temporary city, city budget. Resolution 507, designation of bank depositories and cash management plan for 2015. Resolution 508, fixed interest rate of delinquent taxes and water and sewer charges for 2015. Resolution 509, authorized cancellation of tax delinquencies of less than $10 in 2015. Resolution 510, authorized direct mailing charges and costs associated with tax sale. Resolution 511, authorized chief financial officer to sell on anticipation of capital notes at tax <coughs> sale for 2015. Resolution 512, authorized tax collector to make cash refunds less than $10 for 2015. Resolution 513, authorized senior engineer to execute like use regulatory permits, PWA forms, and soil erosion and sediment control applications in 2015. Resolution 514, authorized city engineer and mayor to execute right of entry permit forms in 2015. Resolution 515, authorized city engineer to execute hot harmless and indemnity agreements in 2015. Resolution 516, authorized tax assessor to file tax appeals and with special counsel file counterclaims before the New <coughs> County Tax Board or the New Jersey Tax Court. Resolution 517, designate public agency compliance officer, Joanne Vitanza for 2015. Resolution 518, resolution authorizing contract with certain approved state contract vendors for contracting units by the purchasing agent. Resolution 519, authorized advertisement <coughs> receipt of bids for various goods, supplies, and services in 2015. Resolution 520, authorized city engineer to sign site remediation project documents submitted to NJPEP. Resolution 521, advice and consent to mayor appointments of department heads, Thomas Lachlan, T.K. Shani, city attorney, Steve Sereki, director of engineering, Douglas Pettix, director of finance, Robert Rolls, director of fire, Glenn Patterson, director of planning, <coughs> and economic development, Anthony Caputo, Director of Police, Steven Sarecki, Director of Public Works, Dave Levins, Director of Social Services, and Alexei Wallace, Director of Water. <coughs> Resolution 522, Advice and Consent to Parking Authority for reappointment. Anthony Barber, Jr., and the term expires December 31st, 2015. I'm sorry, 2019. <laughs> Resolution 523, advice and consent to construction board of appeals we have forward an appointment of Norman Pollitt. This expires the term on December 31st, 2016. And Thomas Valenti, and the term expires December 31st, 2016. Resolution 524, advice and consent to board of ethics reappointment and appointment named on Robin Varga. December expires December 31st, 2019, and rubber Racine, and the term expires on December 31st, 2018. Resolution 525, advice and consent to Citizens Taxi Service Council, Marie Picola. Resolution 526, advice and consent to Library Board of Trustees, reappointment Deborah Sealy, and the term expires on December 31st, 2019. Resolution 527, advice and consent to municipal prosecutors and municipal public defenders reappointments and appointment. Municipal prosecutors Robert Goodwin, Robert <coughs> and Mark Sintron. Public defenders Richard Big and Peter Ventris, and the term expires for them on December 31st, 2015. Resolution 528, advice and consent to Brent Leveling Board reappointments and appointments. David Gomez, 
regular member, this, his term will expire December 31st, 2017. Catherine Trister as an alternate, and her term will expire December 31st, 2015. Brian Kemp is an alternate member, student representative, and his term will expire December 31st, 2015. And Brendan Kaplan, tenant representative, and his term will expire on December 31st, 2017. Resolution 529, advice and consent to cable vision, cable television, citizen advisory committee appointments. John Barbudi Miller, term expiring December 31st, 2016. Jennifer Bradshaw, term expiring December 31st, 2015. Joselito Soto, the term expires December 31st, 2017. Jane Curry, term expired December 31st, 2016, and Alvin Fair, with his term expiring on December 31st, 2017. We have resolution number 530, advice and consent to Community Arts Council reappointments and appointments. Name Christian Curtiva, Dan Swarn, Brianna Sophie, Michael Tublin, and the term expires on December 31st, 2016. <coughs> Um, there's no ordinances on the first reading, then we have, do I go into those resolutions? Resolutions. Resolution 011531, approve agenda amendment. Resolution 532, approve approval 2014 to 1215. Resolution 533, authorize refund for redeemed tax sales certificates. And resolution 534, approve amendment of resolution 011431. Point LLC for extension of contract for one additional year, 2050 municipal payroll services. This is a 12 month contract commencing on January 1st, 2015, and ending on December 31st, 2015. The amount is $45,000. Long term. We have resolution 535, approval of contract with Robert Johnson Physicians Enterprise, PA, for 2015 physician services. The term is 12 months commencing January 1st, 2015, and ending on December 31st, 2015, not to exceed $42,500. This is for an open, no point. And besides that is the next, so it's time to start the meeting for Council Member Anderson? Here. Council Vice President Egan? Here. Council Member Fleming? Here. Council Member Garlotti? Present. Council President Escobar. Here. Recently advised that the notice requirements of the public Open Public Meeting Act has been complied with and satisfied is that the annual notice which gave sufficient notice of the time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick has been filed with the City Clerk, has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper for the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. This time is closed for a moment to all those Americans and Africans who have lost their lives in the war in Afghanistan.
Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. And Council President Egan? <laughs> Now I'll call for a nomination for Vice President. I nominate Glenn Sonny. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Roll call, please. Okay. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Sure. Yes. And Council President Egan? Yes. It has been a learning experience. I hope that we can continue growing and learning from what we have come um, up to now. And I expect nothing but the best moving forward. So thank you. Kevin Egan, you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear, swear that I will faithfully, impartially, unjustly perform all the duties of the office of Council President of the City of New Brunswick according to the best of my abilities. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear that I will faithfully and partially and justly perform all the duties of the office of Council Vice President of the City of New Brunswick according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Secondly, I want to thank Councilwoman Escobar for a great job that she's done the last two years. I know that uh, it's not easy sitting up here and uh, people, you know, not expecting the answer they want to hear or not giving the proper or the you know, fast enough actions. But I think she did an outstanding job, and I'm very proud to have her as a Councilwoman. So thank you very much. Thank you. Also,
also tonight, uh, you see the, uh, the, the uh, resolutions that uh, Mr. Hamilton, our good friend, a little emotional, because I know he is since I was a little kid. Uh, but he served this city well for 28 years plus. He's uh, done an outstanding job <clears throat> excuse me, for the people of the city of New Brunswick. I'm very proud to call him a friend, a father figure. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I wish him the best of luck. I, I really think he did a great job. Thank you. Jamie, congratulations. Uh, I know you're going to do a good job for us here at the City Council. You're certainly more than capable, and uh, I believe we are in good hands if you come to the board as a city attorney. So, congratulations to you. Now, we here at the City Council, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we, we don't ever get everything right. I, I understand that, but we are, we certainly try to do the city, the city's business as best and as well as we can. We're here to help the people of the city of New Brunswick, help them with all the great services that we provide. We're here all to really to work together. And I really, I really believe that we want to do that. But on the other note, that doesn't mean that we're up here to be disrespected and to be shouted at and to be, you know, uh, a punching bag for people. So please keep that in mind when you're addressing the council. If there's anything to do to help you, believe me, we will help you. We're here to help you. So just keep that in mind. We can agree to disagree on a lot of issues, which I'm sure we will. But at the end, we welcome your suggestions. Doesn't mean that we're going to adhere to them or we're going to agree to them. But we're, we're, we're not a closed door government. We're, we're wide open. We're wide open here. And for anybody to think anything differently is mistaken, because we are one of the best urban cities in the state, probably the best, and maybe in the country. So, like again, I wish everybody a happy new year. Things are going to be just a little bit different. As far as when we address the council, I'm going to ask everybody, if you're wearing a hat during the Pledge of Allegiance, you're going to take your hat off. If you're going to address the council with a hat on, you're going to take your hat off. We're going to be respectful to each other. Once we're not respectful to each other, then it becomes something that we really don't want here in, in government. So with that, I would ask if my newly elected vice president has any words to say. I would certainly open the floor to him. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I give honor to God, who's the head of my life. And I want to thank my family thank my council colleagues, everybody that you have given me this honor today. Um, I want to congratulate again uh, Council President Escobar. She's not going anywhere, she just shifted one seat over. But she's taken a lot over the last two years, the last four years. She's taken a lot and she's been very patient. You know, she always uh, served with a smile. I haven't seen, well, maybe one or two times, I'm sorry, I get a little bit upset. But for the most part, she still says congratulations, thank you, when addressing, and she's been nothing but respectful. And I just want to give her one more round of applause, you know, everybody that served. You know. And as I said, everybody that serves in city government, you know, we thank you and all the citizens. Uh, two years ago when I took the oath for the first time, I remember standing up here and I reached for lofty goals where I said, you know, I want to represent a certain segment of population. And I've been trying to represent a segment, but I've learned that it's about, it's about serving all the members of the city. And not just the people who come to the meetings, but there's a silent majority of people in New Brunswick. They pay their taxes every day, they send their kids to school, they want to live in nice neighborhoods, and they feel like, oh, my alarm's going off, I need to turn that off. <laughs> and they feel like at times that, you know, the story of New Brunswick, their, their voices are being drowned out. Because there are some people that would try to tell you that our city is nothing more than we're a place where crime is running rampant, where there's corruption everywhere, uh, there's cover-ups. That's not the city that we live in, and that's not the city that we know. And I'm going to do my best for the next two years to talk about the good things about this city. Yeah, we have our problems, but we're able to pull together in hard times and in tough times. Because our city is a city, we don't run away, we're not torn apart by racial lines, social economic lines. 
A community is a third group of people that pull together. We're a group up here together, we're a group up here, and like Kevin said, he said, we're not necessarily punching bags, we're citizens. We love this city just as much as everybody else. So when we pull together, that means that we come together as a community. We don't walk away or we don't shun diversity in this city, but we embrace diversity. This is the only city where you see where we have a former Irishman right here, a son of an Irishman, who can come together and become the president. His father served the city for years, now he's serving. We have a former mayor's daughter, her mother, sometimes she'll never tell you the story about her, how her mother saved this city from the racial and ethnic strife. We got a Latina here who's been very patient over the years. We have a man here, his mother was an educator, now he's an educator also. This is a diverse group, I'm just a humble person. You know, I got, I'm a son of a nurse, my, my father had a ninth grade education, and I just try to tell people each and every day that we to it, whatever we do in this city, there's always opportunity. The United States of America is a land of opportunity. It's not a land that shuns people away. If the opportunity is in front of you, if you just do the right things, play by the rules, do what you're supposed to do, you can do anything that you want. And I'm humbled today by being, by give, I'm humbled today by being given this enormous responsibility. And I just hope that for the next two years, four years, however long we're on here, that we'll be able to do better if we move forward together. And that goes for anybody else that's a citizen. We work, we work here and we work with you. We're not working against people. But we also have to, you have to meet us halfway at times. You know, because we have to tell the story. We're one of the best. Revive, we're not, not even deep, one of the best. We are the model for urban revitalization all across the country right now. And we're going to start telling that story. That's something to be proud of. New Brunswick isn't a place to lead. New Brunswick is a place to come to. And that's the story that we're going to tell for the next two years. Thank you very much. I thank my colleagues. God bless you all. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank God your five minutes was almost <laughs> Okay, I think we're going to move right into our resolutions under reorganization. Am I correct, uh, Mr. Hamilton? You're correct, Mr. Okay, so we're going to have, we have resolution 501 through resolution 30, uh, 530, I believe it is. Yes, it is. I'm resolution. Would any member of the public like to comment on any of these resolutions? Good evening, buddy. Good evening. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Council President, my name is Charles Cradivel. I hail from New Brunswick. I do want to ask about a couple of the resolutions. Um, I, I see a lot of appointments uh, to volunteer and paid positions. And I do want to ask about uh, 527, is uh, the prosecutors and the public defenders. Can you tell me what the salary is for these jobs and what the benefits are? Uh, yeah, Mr. Lockman, please. Thank you, Mr. Um, Varying degrees of salary, I'd have to um, go back to my uh, desk and, and get that information if you'd like it tonight. Um, and um, these gentlemen um, are, um, in terms of benefits, uh, are in the pension system. Some of them are in the pension system at the moment. I think there's some um, scrutiny as to whether they will stay there. Some of them are not in the pension system at all. Um, their, their compensation ranges in the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range, um, but again, I'd have to go back and look at everyone's individual. Mr. Crouch, we can get you to find the hard figures. That's okay. I just could you just tell me which ones are in the pension system and which ones are not. Um, Mr. Beach is no longer. There's no longer. Mr. Ventress is a new hire, so he uh, would not be in the system. Um, I think Mr. Goodwin is the only one whose uh, current pension ability is being scrutinized. I don't think Mr. Adosha or Cintron are in first. So that was for, I'm sorry, Adosha and Cintron are not? Not in not first. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have some questions on 528. Um, I know Mr. Gomez, I know Mr. Feaster, and I, I think they're, they're fine representatives. Do you, can you tell me, do you, has anybody on the council met Mr. Kemp? Uh, I have not met Mr. Kemp, but, but I did. I did speak to the mayor on all the appointments, and I, I, I asked him about certain appointments, and uh, I, I, I liked what he told me about some people, and 
I asked for some names on this board here, and uh, he told me they were all solid people. Understood. Uh, can you tell me, have you met, uh, have any of the council met Mr. Kaplan? I have not. Anybody on the council familiar with him? Please ask your colleagues. I have met him briefly at a fundraising activity for the town club CDC. Okay. Um, and uh, do you think he's, he's qualified for the board? I believe so. He didn't give me any indication that he was not sure. a candidate. And just for the record, what are the qualifications for a rent control board member in this, in this particular position? He's got to be a tenant in this particular slot. He has to be a tenant in New Brunswick. In New Brunswick. Okay. I believe I believe he lives in the or he lives, I believe he lives in the colony house. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you tell me is he related to the real estate developer with the same name? I couldn't tell you that. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be important to know for somebody on the rent leveling board if they were related to the capital real estate. I just say, I just answer honestly. I, don't I, I understand. Uh, is he related to the superintendent or the former housing inspector? I don't. I don't know. No. Anybody know? He's not. He's not. I'm not. What? I'm not. Oh, he's here right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great. Great. Is uh, can you tell me? Is, 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 you familiar with his schooling, his credentials, uh, educational? No, sir. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I rise and, and you know you asked what can you do to help. I, I, I'm asking for your help today. I, I would ask that you please hold this appointment. Um, I have uh, provided information to the planning director and to the city spokesperson and to the mayor's office regarding this person um, that they are unfit for service on any of these boards. Um, I've. Uh, Witnessed this person spit in my general direction without provocation uh, inside the Kelly's Corner bar. I've also uh, witnessed him lie to my boss. Mr. Crabble, it seems like, like, like a personal, if, a personal I, I, thing I, I, that you have against the guy. Maybe you guys want to take this outside after recess. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't understand. You don't, this, it seems Mr. like it's, it's a personal situation. I, I, I don't think it's fair for you to interrupt me, Council President. I, I'm not going to interrupt you. I would just like for you to hear me out. And, and I'm asking you well, to hold you're, 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 you're slandering the person that's standing right in the room behind you. Everything I'm saying is 100% true. According to who? I am telling you. According I'm, to I'm, I'm, I'm telling you things I witnessed. Well, yeah. Are you allowing me to I'll introduce you, you may, you may, you may, you may keep speaking. Thank you. So uh, I'll be honest. I have no ill will, no Ill will towards this person. Uh, but I do not want to see him appointed to any position of power. Um, I have ample evidence and numerous witnesses prepared to support this claim. He's uh, uh, gone out of his way to file false complete police complaints and uh, lie to people in an attempt to get me fired from my job. Um, he lists among his educational credentials the DeSisto School, which is in fact recognized as a cult. And uh, the DeSisto School was shut down by the Massachusetts state government in 2004, um, around the same time he was there. Um, he's told me that he hopes one day to open a similar boarding school. Um, I encourage you to look at the coverage that ABC 15 in Arizona has done about this horrible, horrible school. I, 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 again, I don't have any ill will towards this man, but I'd be happy to provide you with a police report that shows that he and his wife have uh, harassed and victimized me uh, on multiple occasions. I have that police report. I could email it to you right now if you'd like to read it over, and uh, uh, as you may have figured out, um, he, he was also present for a similar incident where uh, he and his wife came to my location, um, filed a false police report, and that resulted in a <coughs> and I'm sure you've uh, read about that on NJ.com, that the county prosecutor's office has dropped the charge against me uh, after being presented with video evidence that showed Mr. Kaplan and his wife had fabricated allegations against me. This type of behavior is childish, and it damages the very important cause of domestic violence survivors uh, who depend on uh, laws to protect them. Uh, Mr. Kaplan and his wife inappropriately abused the laws in an attempt to harm and inconvenience me, a person who wants nothing to do with them. Uh, this is not the type of person that ought to be representing the city's tens of thousands of tenants. Sorry, is something funny? Yes, I was saying something. Oh, so, so you weren't listening. I was listening. Should I say it again? No. Okay. Well, this is not the type of person 
that ought to be representing the city's tens of thousands of tenants. I have sympathy for him despite his efforts to harm me and my livelihood, but he is certainly unfit for service on the rent leveling board or any other appointed position. With all due respect, I request that you please, please hold this item. Will you please do that for me tonight, Councilman? Thank you, Mr. Crowley. I just want an answer. Will you please do that for me? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, why? This is not a question and answer period here. I just gave you my answer. Do you have anything, anything else on the resolution, sir? Um, uh, yeah, I do want to say that everybody in uh, resolution that ends in 30, I know them all, and they're all great people, and I think that's a, a good set of people that you're appointing. Um, I'm very, very serious. Uh, can, can you just please ask your colleagues and uh, Mr. Patterson if they've received any complaints about Mr. Kaplan? No. Could you ask the planning director, please? Mr. Patterson, have you received any complaints? I assume what Mr. Cradigal is, is referring to are a number of emails that some friends of Mr. Cradigal submitted, which had similar statements to what Mr. Cradigal just uh, uh, stated to, to you. Um, I, I asked Mr. Kaplan if he wanted to serve on the rent control board. He said he was willing to do it. I've known Mr. Kaplan through uh, various other boards uh, in town. I thought he was a, a good um, um, person to ask to, to serve in, in this capacity. Um, as you've stated, Mr. Council President, Mr. Cradigal, Mr. Kaplan seem to have some, uh, some personal issues there, but uh, um, you know, I'm not a close friend of, of Mr. Kaplan's whatever, but through my experience of working with him with, with other boards, he has seemed like a good person to, uh, uh, to have on some of our boards here in town. Do you still stand by his appointment? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just. Uh, resolution, sir? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to urge you one last time to please hold this appointment and look into it. I'm not asking you to vote no. I'm asking you to hold it and look into the allegations that I would have brought to you had this been made public before tonight. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brendan Kaplan. I would like to uh, speak on my own nomination and address some of the comments that were uttered in this room tonight. Sure, we have five minutes, sir. Sure thing. I'll take much less than that, I'm sure. First of all, I really want to thank uh, Director Patterson for um, nominating me. And uh, I was advised by the mayor's office and by Director Patterson that Mr. Credibill had sent a variety of slanderous emails about me. Um, Mr. Cradiville has a long history of playing fast and loose with the truth with his publication in order to carve out some piece of power for himself. Uh, I respect the intelligence behind that, but I don't really respect the result of it. I have here right now uh, civil restraints that were entered in by the family court of, New of uh, Middlesex County. Uh, Mr. Cradiville, unfortunately, um, used to domestically abuse my wife uh, prior to my knowing her. He would throw her down the stairs and do a variety of other things, and uh, I didn't really want anything to do with it, and so um, we stayed out of it. For five years, he's followed us around, and when we discovered uh, pictures, in fact, were alerted to pictures by a good friend of ours appearing in his uh, blog from the inside of our building, and of us, we were quite concerned and brought a, a, a restraining order against him for which he was arrested. Um, Mr. Cradiville signed a statement that was entered into uh, the record by a judge where he agrees to not harm my career, to not follow me around anymore, to not follow my wife around anymore, and in general to cease and desist all of his harassing activities. Uh, obviously, he is not a man of his word and is unable to uh, follow that agreement, that's fine. I, I don't think anything bad needs to happen to him. I don't think he needs to be punished. I think, quite frankly, he needs to um, have some sort of enforced setting where he has the time to speak about his feelings uh, and be barred from you know, uh, intoxication. And uh, hopefully, he can leave me and my wife alone. Um, I'm really excited to serve on the Rent Control Board. Uh, I have a lot of qualifications that unique me, uh, uniquely suit me to do so. Um, I've always sat at the intersection of multiple interest groups, even from the time of my birth, with an Irish Catholic ballet dancer mother from Missoula, Montana, and a Jewish electrical engineer from New York City, grew up door uh, 
In fact, he couldn't go to college at first because there was a quota on the number of Jews they allowed into college. So um, I've, I've been around the block. I've seen quite a few things. Uh, I've always been relied upon by my friends when I was a student at Rutgers University to represent our houses to landlords. I've always done a very good job of that. And in fact, at other times, I have represented landlords' interests to various members of my households uh, who were, you know, uh, unfortunately, as kids, not behaving properly. So I've been on both sides of the issues before, and I really look forward to serving New Brunswick and the rest of the community uh, that I've lived in for 10 years. So thank you guys very much for your time, and uh, sorry for the unpleasantness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Anybody else have the resolutions? My name is Anthony Larvina. I live at 20 Jefferson Avenue. I'd like to congratulate uh, you, Council President and Council Vice President, for being voted on to be Vice President and Council President. Uh, I do have a question about uh, R11503. It's the uh, first page up at the top here. It's the designation of liaisons to various authorities, boards, and commissions, and uh, the, all, all of them are council members. It, are, are these uh, council members required to go to the meetings, the public meetings of those various boards and all that and such? No. Um, <clears throat> maybe, I don't know, change that so they have, maybe not have to, but strongly <laughs> encourage them to kind of go to those, those public meetings? Uh, I mean, it would make some semblance of sense, I guess, that they would be present uh, during the public meeting so they can uh, see what's going on and, and bring that back to the council. Take an ordinance amendment, council president. Excuse me, sir? You take an ordinance amendment to require that. That would have to my ordinance. It's just what the city attorney okay. said. May I say something? Yes. I just want to add that I'm, I'm the liaison to the housing authorities, so I usually, as much as I can, I do attend those meetings. Okay. So. Oh, that's <coughs> definitely good to hear. Um, I, well, I mean, as a, as a, as a citizen, I, uh, I strongly encourage uh, the members of the council to, to uh, go to the respective public meetings of the, the boards and authorities that they're, that they're assigned to. Um, the school board, uh, uh, Mr. Fleming, very, very important uh, thing. Things happen there, and, and I'm in touch. I'm already. I already have a private line between me and the, and the board members, and my background is in education, so we're in touch all the time. So it's not like, and sometimes they every now and then their meeting may conflict with one of ours. Of course. And also, and um, it's just like when we go to certain meetings. You know, when we go to certain meetings, I know my feelings. It's just like people always request the mayor to come to this meeting. You know, it's a different body, and it takes on it. It will turn the meeting into something else, which is not. So that's why I prefer that line of communication in between. I I definitely see where, where you're coming from with that, but um, uh, I I would hope that you wouldn't feel that way going to a school board meeting just to sit and observe and to see what what the the papers are, what people have to say during the public portion. Uh, that, that's really all I have. With, with the, uh, in terms of number three. Uh, and then to this, uh, the rent leveling board, 28. Um, uh, first, I'd, I'd like you to hold the, the appointment of uh, Mr. Kaplan. Uh, not vote no, just hold it. Uh, there have been some allegations level that seem pretty harsh, if you could look into them uh, as a council and then vote on it at another meeting, next meeting, it's only two weeks away. I don't, I don't see that that would be so horrible. Uh, also, would, uh, is, is the rent leveling board a public meeting? Yes. 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 Uh, would Mr. Craddleville's presence be prohibited at that board meeting? Or any of Mr. Credible's friends, or acquaintances, or friends of friends, or uh, relatives? I, I don't know. No, no, I don't think his friends would be. But I don't know if he has a if there's a law if he has a restraining order against it too. I guess then he maybe would be. For the record, I don't. There's okay. No, there's no orders against. I say if if. Okay. Just for the record. We should wait till the movie comes out for this, for this thing. <laughs> Listen, um, this is a. Can we move on? Uh, go on, sir. Uh, yeah, and I, I I understand your feelings of. of wanted to move on and, and pass this, and we've definitely had uh, a good 10 minutes of comment uh, about it, and uh, 
Again, I just respectfully ask that you, that you hold the uh, the one appointment. And uh, any other thing on the resolution? That's all I got for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's correct. Uh, so, past council president, we held it last meeting, as a matter of fact. To, for the, to have some uh, two meetings ago. Two meetings ago, we, 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 we held it, it just to look into it. And that's right. The mayor, so we just looked at it and we we're confident of the appointment. Thank you. Anybody like, would anybody like to uh, read the resolution? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? I have. I'm sorry, no more. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. President F. Egan? <laughs> yes. We also have resolution 531, resolutions, I should say, 531 to 535. Would anybody like to comment on those particular resolutions? I'll wait for you, Charlie. Thank you, sir. I promise. I'm good. I'm good. You sure? Yeah. Uh, See you now? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. I do have a question. The, um, the number five, 535, the award of contract. What's, uh, oh, it's just, I'm sorry. I'm uh, just reading it now. Uh, physician services. It's just for so doctors on the or how does that work? Yes, we contract with, um, uh, a physician in the area every year to assist us with uh, pre-employment physicals for uh, all of our hires. We uh, rely on that um, uh, office also to do um, some um, return to work physicals and examinations for us and we are also relying on this particular uh, physician service to assist us with the random drug testing uh, program out of the fire department. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Seeing no other Oops, resolution. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. President Egan? Yes. Okay, we now move to the public portion of the meeting. Does anybody wish to address the council or any council member wish to address the public at this time? <coughs> Five-minute rules in effect, sir. Roger that. Thank you. Anthony Laravina, 20 Jefferson Avenue. Uh, so I'm not sure of the, the name of the park in French Street where uh, French Street and Jersey Avenue come together, but uh, that park has about 20 or so street lights. it looks like. They are all out, all of them. None of them are on at night. And uh, I would like to get the electricity turned back on to those lights um, because it's very dark there. And uh, at the widest point of the park, it's it's uh, pretty wide, and it presents it kind of looks a little intimidating over there. None of the lights are working. None. And I've driven past at multiple different times during the night, like nine o'clock, because sometimes with the daylight savings time, they it, it doesn't come on right away when it's dark. But I've driven past uh, on multiple occasions at different times of night, and I think the latest was about ten or eleven o'clock at night, and they were not on. We'll, look we'll, we'll certainly get we'll get right on that tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, another thing. What's Monument Park? Monument Park. We call that War Memorial Park. War Memorial Park. Okay. For your records. Thank you. The Mexican community of Oaxaca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and then uh, again with with French Street, if we could um, <coughs> possibly paint. Uh, repaint the crosswalks that are currently going across French Street and then I know or at least I've seen on the three offset intersections, Sedan being the most prominent, uh, there aren't any crosswalks. It seems like that, that were painted or, or have worn away. It doesn't seem like any crosswalks have been put down ever uh, going <coughs> across French Street and those intersections are particularly uh, dangerous places to try to cross the street. And if we could try to make them a little bit safer, a little more visibility would be great uh, in that corridor. Uh, also, uh, can I have an update on the East Avenue uh, lighting study that I know uh, one of your one of your city employees has been doing? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the police department did an evaluation on the lights on Easton Avenue as well as lights that are 
on the side streets of Easton Avenue. And yesterday, I reported the lights that were out, the lights that were dim, as well as ordered new lights. And uh, how many uh, new lights are we getting? Are we getting an entire side of the street uh, to be lit? That Eight new lights. Eight new lights. Yes, sir. Perfect. Uh, well, I can't wait to, uh, to put in. I'm um, very interested to see that. That's going to be great. Thank you so much. And um, the Rogers Lane, the small piece of it that is in New Brunswick, it's, uh, it creates a, an S turn. It's two 90 degree turns, and then it goes into that circle right on, on, right on George Street there. Uh, there's a very prominent bus stop at, that, uh, at the one turn, and then there's uh, another, uh, a number of university buildings that are further down Riders Lane. On multiple occasions, I've been driving down Riders Lane at night and seen students walking down the side of the road. And it's, there's no shoulder, it's just, the, just probably a line wide on the, on, the, uh, on the side of the road there. It's very dangerous, it's very dark, there's not many lights. If we could put in a sidewalk, that would be amazing. I mean, I don't think anybody's been hit yet, but I know driving down Riders Lane, it, it's, uh, there, there's definitely been close calls. It's a very thin road, which I think helps the speed, but we need to I don't even know if there's any room for a side. I don't even know if there's any room for a sidewalk there. <laughs> You're right. When you got wood going there, you have all those different intersections there. There's kids walking all over the place here. People coming from Sears. There's people coming from the labor center on the right side there. I think you could do some something on the side that the records cats and I think it's cats and back door. Cats and back on the left there. Yeah. They have the fence there. I mean, maybe well, talk about the property. I mean, that's the county road too. County, county road. road. Okay. I'll talk to you. Correct. All right. All right. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thank, Thank you, you so much for the update on Easton. You are. Good evening once again, Charles Craddeville from New Brunswick. Uh, I want to say, uh, I'll, I'll just start, I'm disappointed, and you know, you, you say that you don't want the council to be a punching bag, and uh, you know, I would suggest that um, when you ignore reasonable pleas from people in the public, uh, like you just did, you invite criticism and you invite uh, invite that, and I'll do my best to resist the urge, but, uh, you know, you, we, we, ask, we ask very reasonably for something. And I do want to also address your comment, you said, I'll wait for the movie. Good point. When are these meetings going to be televised on cable TV? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is that something that's going to happen this year? I have an answer for you for that, sir. Is that something you'll support? No, not at this time. You don't want the meeting? Well, I don't know. I be, I'm, not, I'm not close to it. Maybe we'll look into it through the year. I don't know. Okay. Because it's been said that there's new technology that you're going to be able to put them on TV. I think you got nothing to lose, uh, and you give give people some maybe some entertainment too sometimes. So, um, <laughs> I, I need to ask about several uh, uh, crime situations. Was there a car fire last night on Commercial Avenue, and can you confirm whether that was connected to all the car fires over the summer or? There's no connection. Captain, there's no connection. But there was a car fire. Uh, Can anybody respond if there was a car fire? Yes, yeah. there was. Can you stand up, please? <clears throat> yeah, there was a car fire Tuesday morning okay. at the Barker's house. Okay. Any, uh, any details on what caused it? Right now, it's still under, still under investigation, but it does not look like it is. It's just in the area of fire. Okay. Um, how about the stabbing on January 1st at Sedam and Railroad? Can you confirm that? What's the status? Is there an arrest? Captain? Made? Uh, you have to give me more details. I will handle it. Okay, I mean, it was a pretty big, big deal. There was a person stabbed, and they found him on the corner of Joyce Kilmer and Sedan. There's really no update on that. Okay. Give me a time and a date. And... When you blindside me, I can't just pull stuff out of the top of my head, Charlie. I, I, I emailed the captain about this. There's no doubt about Charlie, that. Charlie, you email me. Hundred times a day, sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Exactly. Okay. I email people a reasonable amount when they're serious. Right. Right. Well, I'll make sure he's going to get you the information. Yeah. Okay, so I'll change my line of uh, 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 a little bit here. I want to. I want to say that we fought very hard last year because there were crimes in in the neighborhood where I was living, Fifth and Sixth Ward, and we got Rutgers to agree to put out a crime alert anytime there was a serious assault or shooting or something like that. Um, and uh, I think that's been good. Um, it means there's the perception of maybe more crime because more people are hearing about it, but it's good because people are more alert. And 
there might be more crimes being solved because people are getting the information quickly through records. And I'm just here to say, I think every neighborhood in New Brunswick deserves that. And I would like to see the New Brunswick police announce serious crimes that happen, even if they haven't been solved yet, so that maybe they can help get the public to help um, solve them and also help, help the public avoid being victims. Um, and I think that when there's a stabbing uh, and then an armed robbery in the same neighborhood the next day, um, the police ought to make an announcement, and, and, uh, and that, as far as I know, did not occur. So that's that's my two cents on that. Can we uh, stop you right there? Yes. You did run into the captain who would like to respond. Oh, to sure. I, I hear what Mr. Crowell is saying, and there is a time to respond immediately, and there is a time not to. As you saw in the press release <coughs> today, which you, you know, responded to immediately on your blog, the, um, there is a time not to give that information. You see the way things were related and the crime were solved. If that stuff was just blab blabbed out immediately when you send me an email saying what happened, that wouldn't have been solved the way it was. So there's a time to give stuff out and there's a time not to. I hear what you're saying, and sometimes you're right, but sometimes you're wrong. Okay, fair enough. Well, I hope you keep this in mind in 2015. Thank you for, for those, those words, Captain. Um, I do need to ask, how many murders were there in, in 2014? Four. Four. And how many non-fatal shootings? I don't know. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, just for the record, that's a question I've asked, and I'm hoping to get an answer. I also want to know about the increase in assaults. By my count, um, <coughs> by the according to state police, first nine months of 2014, there was a 46 percent increase in assaults in New Brunswick, while the statewide trend was actually going the opposite direction, going down. Um, can you tell me, is there any? What do you think the reason is for that? I don't know the reason for that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is, that, is that a true statistic? Yes, that is. Okay. Uh, Captain? I have not know the reason yet. Okay. Can you tell me what is the city doing about it? I can't tell you what we're doing about it. Breaks my heart to hear that. I mean, well, can you, can you please? I'm not trying to break your heart. I'm just telling you the truth. Okay, well. The police really deploy people. I mean, our police, our, our police are, are, are doing an outstanding job every day. I mean, uh, I, I believe every, if, there, if there's a hole in the crack, they try to fix it. They, they you know, they're, 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 they, they certainly don't want to be a, a, we certainly, I believe that all the police officers do not want a crime-ridden city in the city of Brunswick. And they're doing the best. And if there's a problem, their superiors are trying to fix the problem. But I am not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the police, and you know that. So I wouldn't know that answer to that question. Well, this would be exactly why you would want to have an update at every meeting about public safety. What changed? What, what's going up? What's going down? What's being done about it? And, and honestly, there's, there's an increase in crime, and there's no explanation for what's behind it, and no stated plan for what's being done about it. I, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think any of the cops want there to be a lot of crime. but. There, there needs to be a plan, and that plan, some of those aspects of those plans need to be shared with the public. That's, that's, I think, that, that, that's reason. your opinion, and you're entitled to it. Okay, well, I think you should want to know what's being done about it, and I think all of us want to know, and we're depending on you to help us find out. Um, can I ask about the police voice recognition software? Do they have voice recognition software? Do we have voice recognition software, Captain? Henry Mars. I got it. I, I, if you recall the last meeting, I, I, I used the term voice recognition, and, and, and in the same breath, and maybe I misspoke. I did email Mr. Cradiville, answered his question from last meeting. Um, again, uh, repeated myself that maybe I misspoke on the voice recognition issue and suggested he contact Captain Miller for any other questions. So I might have started the whole thing by misspeaking two weeks ago. Right, I've asked the email, I've not heard back from Captain Miller, so I'm asking here tonight, does the police department have software that could be called voice recognition software? A voice recognition system? Voice recognition, meaning if someone wants to speak, we you know who it is? Yeah, are you yes. asking me? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Here you go. Um, I, I, I want to uh, just address a big problem in downtown. Don't worry, he's on it. It, it, it seems like it's going on forever. I'm good. At the, at the, See, fair, at the fair and wall, oh man. At the fair and wall, they've got fences around everything. Yes. And you basically, we say we're a transit friendly city, but right across from the train station, you've got a bus stop now where people have nowhere to sit and nowhere to seek shelter from the elements. 
So you've got people leaning up against this fence, and that's all they've got at that suburban bus stop there. Please, I know you with the parking, you have a, uh, the liaison of the parking authority. Put a bench out there. Put a shelter out there. I'm, I'm appalled at this, the status of, of some of the bus shelters in town. And, um, you know, there's like a, a whole route, the fifth and sixth ward shuttle that goes around. There's no stop. There's no shelters along the stop, so people don't mind it as much as they were. I would like to see more shelters and better shelters in 2015. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crowder. Would anybody else like to address the council at this time? Seeing that? Oops. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> uh, newly elected Mr. President, I believe. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Lenny Muhammad. I am the representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar <coughs> here in the city of New Brunswick and Somerset. I wanted to publicly just come forward and thank uh, outgoing president, uh, Ms. Escobar, Councilwoman Escobar, for her assistance in an event that we had this past summer. I did not get a chance to do that publicly, and I think I would be remiss in my duty uh, not to thank you and the council for your support in an effort where we were able to have, I believe, nearly 300 uh, people from the city of New Brunswick in Feasters Park for benefit or actually a basketball game that was a sign of our ability to have events with very little police presence needed and have a peaceful event. I think it sets the tone for 2015 that we can look forward to doing more uh, events in the community. So to the gentlemen's um, cry of more policing or what are we going to do to solve the rise in assaults, it's our responsibility and we take that personally to be out to help police captains and elected officials to serve our community. So to all of you for the City Council, I want to thank you for your service in 2014, but I definitely wanted to take a moment to uh, offer our assistance in any way that we can to help make our community that much safer and that much better for a better quality of life for everyone. So, Councilwoman Escobar, thank you. And to all of you for your service, we thank you. And if we can be of my office of any assistance, we ask that you don't hesitate to call us. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Anybody else like to address the council at this time? Anyone else? Good evening, uh, newly elected uh, Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Thank you. I don't know if you can hold up uh, to what your father did, you know. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, but uh, it's in the DNA. I'd like to uh, uh, thank uh, Minister Mani Muhammad, Nation of Islam, for. Uh, 2014 working closely uh, with me and the council with Dr. King programs that, we'd, uh, that we were able to uh, bring about. Uh, we call them steps and we're getting ready to take another step. I'd also like to uh, thank, because uh, I appreciate Bill Hamilton, he's been here, I lived in the city all my life. He always advised me right, uh, he was always a gentleman. If we disagree, we disagree, but I look at him as a, as a go-to friend. Uh, so I congratulate you for being council member. <coughs> I also congratulate the vice president, Mr. Glenn Fleming, who have worked with the community, myself and uh, Minister Muhammad and the city council in uh, 2014. I'd also like to thank uh, The singing girl over there, I know that she, <laughs> her mother, you know what I mean? Because when it came down to the Dr. King program and the mural and everything, she was the first person that I spoke to from the backyard of my family yard. So she was like the first support to say, hey, Jimmy, it was okay. You know what I mean? So, you know, when we passed out recognition and stuff like that, I, you know, I'm not perfect, you know. But uh, Council <coughs> President Escobar, you did a hell of a job, you know. 
Now, just let me say this, and uh, Dr. King's birthday is uh, January 15th. Uh, we want to do something on his birthday. Uh, Len, I check with that space. We want to take another step. In my area, uh, when I come outside to sweep or whatever I do, there's always people asking me questions. There's, there's always, uh, what, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know? And <clears throat> on the 15th this year, we found the building. I'll let the business administrator know Monday because he, he, he always say I'm last minute, but I'm on time. <laughs> and you go work with it, yeah. But I found a building, and to me, a lot of people, they don't like to go to church. They don't want to go down to the police department. They don't want to go to the miles. They need a, a neutral place where they can just go and, and vent, you know, and uh, they be listened to, you know, that somebody care, you know. And if everything go all right, which I'll call you later on, because I just want to say that, it certainly look okay so far. Uh, on that corner, we were nice and we, we, were, we were right on time to make that Dr. King corner. We got some history here. We got uh, something that other communities could, could look at. You know, we're ahead of the curve here. If it works out, we can have like a little Dr. King center there with uh, history, and, and it could be like it could be used for multiple things. Multiple things. You know. Uh, for like Charlie saying uh, it was a, uh, an incident at George Cummer Amsterdam. People might not know. People want to have, have a meeting. Okay, what can we do about it? My whole thing is solutions. You know, I'm not going to spend my time complaining. You know, we've been moving good, and and <clears throat> for uh, 2015, you know, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, now, now, Council President. Well, the other councilmen, when we have these events, been showing up. <laughs> so, <coughs> so, so I, visited, I visited the mural, but I did not show up. Oh, oh I, I know, I know. I, but, but for this <laughs> event, and, and with all the things that's happening in the communities, with the police and everything like that, you know, this might be a good time. You know, we might all have differences. Certainly, I have differences with folks. But the thing about it is solutions and how we go about straightening that out. So I, I think that this event that we're trying to put together, Mace Vizlam, Councilman uh, Glenn Clement, I know John Anderson is always there, but back, you know, and, and uh, it's about all of us. So, you know, I'll get to you late Monday. <laughs> Does it require council action? I, that's why I'm going to get to you. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we want to be on time. And, and I also want to congratulate uh, T.K. Shammy for being the, uh, for his promotion, and I, I hope that we can uh, have a good year. God bless Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council at this time? Seeing any? Wish to adjourn? So moved. Second. Roll call. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice yes. President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan. Yes.